She has one. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I had the smartest person in Bella Vista. He's that guy on the west side with Kraken. He ran for JP. He was unopposed in the primary and unopposed in the general. No, that's the way it was. Yeah. Twice. Well, 90%. Oh, Thank you. Yes, yes. All right. Yep, thank you. Those are the things that need to be done. And find out how to do it. Because we are not required to accept that type of thing. By law, we're not required to. So, that's what I'm We don't have to really have that. I'm just trying to hear. I did walk the bottom. The bottom said that it takes her a day. Oh, here and not here. I went out there for the day. Mayor Christie is not here. No, and Wise is gone. He's going to uh, Peter be here. No, oh, no. Who's, got, who's got his family? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, there was a medical thing. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I mean, it's real straight. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all of that is well, if we're nice and warm, you go down to Florida. It's about to be great for time for tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. 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 Uh, we don't need to do a roll call because it's just a work session. Uh, obviously, I am not Peter Christie. Uh, he had a, a, a just a little, I think, medical appointment today. I don't think it's really anything serious, but that's where he is. So I'm going to take his place this evening. Uh, we have a pretty short agenda. It really shouldn't take that long. Uh, what I'd like to do, because it's not you know official order of business, I'm going to, uh, I was asked if we could let have uh, Emily go ahead and come forward and present her piece. It's on the discussion item, but she has some other uh, business to attend to this evening. So, Emily? Thank you, everyone, for letting me go first. Um, appreciate it. So my uh, discussion item is very brief um, and mostly just for informational purposes. I do have um, a handout for you that shows a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about. Thank you. All right, so this is a uh, proposed U.S. bike route, number 251, um, and it is being proposed by regional planning, uh, but we're one of the cities that will have the bike route, uh, the bike route will go through, um, and so it does require a letter of support from the city to show that we're supportive of this national bike route. So a high-level overview of what this bike route is, um, basically it's a national uh, bike route that ultimately goes across the entire country. Um, this small segment, 251, um, is an alternate route to uh, US Bike Route 51, and it will connect Springfield down to Bella Vista. Uh, so it's about 100 miles in length, and um, basically it just designates a preferred route from point A to point B. And so um, my way of thinking it, of it is, is basically a glorified line on the map, it shows uh, people who are traveling cross country that they can take this route and generally, generally be riding on safer roads when they're traveling cross country. 
uh, no additional bike signage or infrastructure is necessary, so no funding is needed from the city. Um, the uh, only purpose of, of this project is to provide a safe route for people who are traveling on foot or on bike. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know because uh, we do need to provide a letter of support to regional planning so that they can adopt this bike route and then that uh, adoption will go to RDOT who will then apply for this designation in April. So is all of this on regular roads? It's all on regular roads. Um, about 60% paved roads, 40% gravel roads. Um, the roads are generally lower traffic volumes, um, so safe, safer for riding lower speed limits. Uh, but as you can see in the Bella Vista portion, um, which actually I can walk through the Bella Vista portion if, if you'd like, um, there's not infrastructure on every single road that's specifically dedicated for bicyclists. Uh, so, uh, what there's I should There's not first. infrastructure. You said there's not infrastructure provided or infrastructure on all the roads. What do you What do you mean? Uh, no bike lanes or uh, a trail okay. or anything like that. So people will be riding uh, either in the roadway or on a shoulder. Okay. Yes. Two questions. Actually, the, fir the first one before I get into this plan, mm -hmm. I've heard that uh, there was a plan or discussion out there connecting the back 40 to Joplin, that this does no relationship to that at all. So uh, there is actually a different national route, uh, US Bike Route 51, that connects Joplin down to Alma. Uh, and that one travels along the Razorback Greenway up to its terminus in Bella Vista and then stays on 71 okay. up to Joplin. Okay. And that one, I believe, was just approved up in Missouri. And so they're working on uh, going through their approval process to get that uh, designated as an official route. So when they get that done, we would have some linkage or tie mm -hmm. in to yep. ours like this, a plan approval like this for that support. Exactly. Okay. The second question is, um, in Bella Vista, the portion that's in Bella Vista proposed here, those who you said are along all existing roads, either paved or graveled. Mm -hmm. um, relative to that in our comprehensive plan they had proposed uh, multi modal modal transportation uh, so that we could our roads could share with bicyclists could share with the buses could share with whatever uh, how does the how is that impact how does that impact us does that mean we need to do some real aggressive positive planning for this section here uh, to widen pavement or add bike lanes yeah. in both sides for that as a part of our near-term public works improvements for streets? That's a great question. Um, so to start off with my answer, can I just walk you guys through where the, where the route goes? I realize okay. I didn't do that from the beginning. Um, so the Bella Vista portion of this route uh, will start at the Razorback Greenway Terminus where the Blowing Springs to Metfield uh, Greenway connects to the Razorback Greenway. Uh, it'll take the Blowing Springs to Metfield Greenway all the way up to Commonwealth, where Houston hits Commonwealth, and then the route will head east on Commonwealth out to Looney Road and enter Pea Ridge. So Pea Ridge is actually also going through this exact same process that we're going through. They'll also be writing a letter of support. And so to answer your question, uh, we only have dedicated bicycle infrastructure, the Greenway, for about half of that segment mm -hmm. from the Razorback Greenway up to Commonwealth. Um, so that section, the bikers will feel very safe on. But then the section from that Greenway terminus to Looney Road on, on Commonwealth currently is very narrow and twisty with no shoulder. Um, and that section, um, as part of this adoption of this route, we do not have to do anything for that. So we do not need to put signage there. We do not need to add a shoulder. We do not need to add a bike lane. That being said, if we wanted to pursue that, we could, and we could expedite that in order for that route to attract more people to come to Bella Vista. Um, and so that could be a way to, to enhance that. I will say that in the uh, comprehensive plan, like you mentioned, and also in our trails plan and the regional uh, the, the current regional bike and pedestrian plan that we do show uh, a greenway actually going along Commonwealth all the way to Bella Vista's eastern city limits. And so 
we could expedite that project and get that done quicker to make that route a little bit safer. And that would require us to partner up with the POA, Bella Vista POA, yep. to do that. Yep, we would need to amend our license agreement to include the additional okay. parcels we're going through. Mm -hmm. What additional steps do we need to do to further that plan? Uh, we would need to engage with a consultant to actually design that trail and then a contractor to build the trail. Um, we would need to get approval from the POA to, um, to, for their okay that we could build a trail on POA common property on, on that swath of land. And then uh, we need to go through city approval as well for likely a large scale development for building that trail. Timing wise, once we, if we were to approve this, the timing to do those upgrades like you're talking about, what's next two years, three years, five years for uh, implementation? Yeah, so we're just in the initial stages of um, designating this route. And so uh, right now I'm, I'm just informing you guys that we're, we're thinking of doing this. In the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll write a letter of support to regional planning. Um, regional planning will take that to their uh, technical advisory committee and their policy committee to adopt this de designation in Northwest Arkansas and then that, that'll happen in January and then all of all of those adoption uh, or that adoption resolution from regional planning will go to RDOT in April for them to actually apply for this designation and so I can't imagine that we would actually get this designation until early summer at the earliest uh, and then in terms of constructing a new trail along Commonwealth, that would likely take at least a couple of years because we're currently under design on two new greenways, the one that goes west on Commonwealth and along Trafalgar and then the Razorback extension. And so our focus on is, is getting those ones done right now. Um, so I would say we would probably at the earliest begin design work on the east Commonwealth extension and in a year and then from there it'd be two or three years until it's fully built out. So we would not have the infrastructure in place before the designation. And would the East Commonwealth, excuse me for first you know, the East Commonwealth extension would only be done because of this? No, no, I mean, there, there's no, this, de this designation yeah. does not require anything to be built. No, yeah. no, nothing is really needed from the city except uh, us saying that we're okay with riders across the nation using our roads to travel through. Um, if we wanted to pursue more, we could, but, but we do not have to. Right. For, it's for just a matter. designation. Yeah. It's just an yeah. approval. Right. When do you need the letter from the city? Uh, the next uh, two weeks or so, and I've been working yeah. with, with the mayor a little bit so about that. So it needs that. to be on our agenda for, next, for our meeting. But for the letter? Yeah, for the letter. Do you need a council resolution? Are you just feel them out? We, we just need a letter of support. No resolution from city council is needed, but we do need a resolution from regional planning, if that makes any sense. From, from the mayor? So, so the mayor, uh, well, my understanding is that the mayor will write a letter of support saying that the city is on board with having a national route coming through, and then P Ridge will also write that letter, and, and uh, Missouri will as well. That all those letters will then go to the Northwest Arkansas Regional Planning Commission, will, where they will adopt it as part of their <coughs> regional network. I think you probably would want a council, a city okay. council resolution, okay. some some kind of saying that it's the policy of the city that we support this, okay. so that the mayor can, can do that. Letter. Because otherwise, if it's mayor support, then you know yeah. it, it, those things can change with depending on what the situation is. So. Okay. Um, you know, I, so but I can draft something for this month or December either either way. And, mm -hmm. Well, okay. it's the next couple of weeks, I would suggest. Well, we'll need to have it for Monday, so I would I'll suggest draft we one. do it this week. Yeah. Is, is that possible to do it yeah. next week? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Just send me the information on the uh, any documentation you've got and, and kind of what we're, what it is we're supporting, so I can put it in the resolution and okay. I'll just send it to me tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Any other questions? I've, I wanted to ask you one that we may need to think about mm -hmm. legal on the legal side. If this is designated sort of, I'm going to call it a federal highway, though it's not a federal highway, it's a federal trail. Is that going to mean that our current arrangements with the POA in terms of licensing, we're going to have to take full right of way in order to keep those designations and potentially get federal funding for this stuff in the future? 
it may be something we need to look into. I don't know if we have the answer to that question or not. Yeah, I, I don't believe so because we're using public right of way amenities. Uh, I, I did run this proposal by Tom Judson, mm -hmm. and he didn't believe that they needed any board or, uh, approval or adoption or anything like of that sort. But that is an interesting question that I we mean, should probably. I mean, it's going to be the existing rights of way that we've got. That's that's. Thing. But if we're going to cut across private property, that's especially because I have no doubt there's probably some plan to get federal money for this. It, it maybe at some point. I, I, it honestly, depends. Okay. We really don't need to do anything. Uh, uh, we're getting way ahead, but I'm just but thinking yeah. ahead. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Emily. We appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Have a good evening. All right. <clears throat> Review of minutes. Uh, I guess everyone who read the minutes from uh, October 24th, regular meeting, October 27th, special meeting. Does anybody have any ads, amendments, comments? Larry found a couple typos for me to fix, and I'll take Just, care just of typos, that. though. Not any changes in verbiage right. or anything like that or intent. Okay. All right. So nothing changed there. Uh, we'll move on to unfinished business, ordinance. And I'm going to ask Taylor to come up and take us through this one more time. I mean, it's we've done this a couple times, but it's not going to hurt to review it, I guess, one more time, make sure we get it all straight. So this is amending Chapter 109 Zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Bella Vista to define short-term rentals, to provide for inclusion of short-term rental uses within the table of uses, to determine the short-term rental usage as a right or with a conditional use permit within particular zones and for other purposes. This would be the second reading. So yeah, this, I was actually a little surprised to see that this was still on the table for discussion. Um, it may be better just practice-wise from a staff perspective to have it go with a regulation if there's going to be one, but if there's not going to be one, because otherwise this will be just a land use that's in our code with no order of operations for it to follow. Um, but essentially this is looking at making it by right in the residential and commercial districts and establishing it as a land use officially. Um, and our zoning code that we have and our table of use appendix that we have at the very bottom. Um, and then the A1 and P1, which is our agricultural, we have one zone in Bella Vista, agricultural, and then our P1 zone will require a CUP or conditional use permit from the Planning Commission is what's on the table right now. Um, but like I said, there's no regulations or order of operations or anything to follow with that. It would just make it by right in the commercial and residential zones and then require a CUP uh, from the Planning Commission is all that would do. In P1 and A1. P1 and A1. Okay, so question. Um, other uses in the zoning code. You talk about order of operations. So other uses they have, like order of operations, something that speaks to it, that follows that Yeah, like use. bed and breakfast, that's a mention of a land use in there. And there's an order of operations for it to follow um, regarding all of those have to get a CUP though in most of the zones. But they're mentioned somewhere else in our zoning code that has requirements for that land use, um, typically. Um, I'm not aware of any off-right, like even a parking lot. A parking lot is a land use, off-site parking lot in our um, use chart, but there's a requirement in there for permitting, like later on in the zoning code. So we have something to refer to that says what permits it need. Same thing with communications towers. Like if you're going to do something with a communication tower, that's, that's an identified land use that we recently added. Uh, within the last several years, but also regulations and a order of operations was adopted with it as well in our zoning code. So I'm not aware of any, like at this moment, off the top of my head, of a land use that doesn't have some type of steps for staff to follow in administration, if that makes sense. Yeah. I want to I want to make clear to you that any of the proposals that you all have looked at and that are coming back in January, those are not zoning regulations. Those are public health, safety, and welfare regulations. So. This is the only zoning aspect to this. So you can do this and not do anything else. At least you've accounted for it in your zoning code. And at most, what it would do is you know, require a conditional use if someone wanted to do it in a P1 or an A1. Um, but at least you've got it accounted for in your, in your schedule of uses. This is a type of use we have never encountered before. It's not even considered. So they're just trying to get it in there as a type of thing people do on property and a general rule for it in terms of the zoning. So. Um, you can do this and not do anything else, or you can wait. It, it's entirely up to you. Of course, I, all this is up to you, but I think you know what I mean. Jerry? There has been some discussion about uh, 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 some similar guidelines or regulations regarding long-term rentals. 
Will that change this? No. 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 No impact on that whatsoever. Okay. <coughs> this specifically deals with short-term rentals not being in our code currently as it is. Yeah, there's no mention at all of any kind of short-term rental in our code right now. We have bed and breakfast and then tran like we just have the lodging, which is commercial. Okay, anything else on that for now? I, I, I guess my view is I'm uncomfortable in moving ahead with this until we have the rest of it to go along I would with agree. it as a tandem package. I would agree. Yeah. Um, so we can wait, you know, till meeting next Monday. When somebody wants to make a proposal to the table, then you know we can do that at that well, time. It's only second meeting. Well, okay. but but it'll oh, third third in December. Be December, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. Okay. New business <coughs> ordinance waiving the requirements of formal competitive bidding and authorizing the purchase of street salt and sand base on price availability. By informal price quotes through the December 31st of 20, through December 31st of 2023. This is something that we've been doing every year since I've been on council. This is my sixth year, so it's not anything out of the ordinary. Mike, if you want to speak to it, there's a letter in your packet that, that details why we do this because. Yeah, I mean, I basically exp explained it in that memo. So, I mean, if you got a question, here I am, other than what I've got there. I don't have any questions. I mean, we do it every year. Anybody else have any questions about that? Nope. Okay. All right, Mike. Thank you. Hope we don't need it tonight. <laughs> it's a good time to ask for it, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need it in the morning. Okay. Resolution. Authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a limited terminable license agreement with Bella Vista Village Property Owners Association Incorporated for the purpose of providing additional access to the street department salt and sand facility on Glasgow Road. What do you need? Okay, I started, I thought she started to get up. Um, does anybody like any details or explanation behind this? It was pretty clearly yeah, laid out in the it packet. It was all in the packet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had the map, it's, yeah. it's the water tower, it's the road behind the water tower, that's POA property, and we need access across that road. And this is continue that. There's a license of $1 for 25 years, and then we have options, I think, for a 10 year period, two 10 year periods following that. And, and the reason we go through this weird, rather than just getting an easement, is because they are of the position they cannot grant us an easement without a membership vote, uh, the whole property owners association. So uh, they are of the, of the belief that they can enter into these license agreements with us in order to allow us or, uh, to have access uh, across there, but uh, that's what it is. It, it's, it's basically like an easement. It's just allowing us to go across the back there for the access to Mike's new uh, facility there. Okay. Yeah, Larry. I, I guess as a as an aside, when the city took over the fire department system and all of the properties associated with that, is that not an issue that we overlooked or? No, the, the POA because voted. Because they had a, are you talking about the POA vote? Well, I'm, no, I'm talking about this, the, the easement that we're, or this license we're talking about now from the POA. I think it was already in use and it, it more than likely could even already be considered a prescriptive easement. But uh, as part of the development plan for the adjoining parcel, Planning Commission wanted to make sure that that access was delineated and clearly stated. And so that's why they're going through and doing it at this time. So in, in your recollection, we did not, when we took over the fire station here and that access drive. I don't think they granted it. I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the documentation, but I don't, when we uh, bought that prop, well, when we took over the fire department. Would, would, wouldn't that we, question have come up at that time, I, knowing that? It probably should have. I, I don't recall whether it did or not. Um, there's no easement there now, so I know obviously we need to yeah, take care of okay. it. So yeah. um, I can't answer that without going back through the records. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Resolution making various adjustments to the 2022 city budget, something that we do every year. It's just kind of an administrative thing, exactly. really. Exactly. That's all it is. Um, it, um, this, this is different than the interdepartmental. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, this is not the one that you guys right. will adopt next month for interdepartmental adjustments. Yeah, that's not this one. This one is one that you guys do um, yearly as well, and it basically says that we get donations from the community, and it's the a resolution that says we're going to, to the best of our ability, honor the community's request that we use those donations as stipulated. <laughs> we, we, we start we start the year with a balance, right? And then mm -hmm. we have donations, and then we have withdrawals. Exactly. And so now we have to reset that, and we have to have an ending number from what those transactions were to start out 2020. Well, this is uh, this is um, you know how we looked at the audit, and we had the, the 2021 December 31st balance. So here on the left of that of the uh, sheet, you're going to see that uh, the donations that. 2020 were 144. Yep. So those are what we call it's we have that concept of unrestricted funds. Well, unrestricted funds would include donations because they're not legally restricted. And all we're asking is to go ahead and call them assigned and to the best of our ability honor the don okay. honor the donor's wishes. That's it. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. And then I, I give you here an estimate of where we are going to be at the end of this year, but that is just an estimate. Is there any questions about it? Nope. All right. Thank you very All much. All right. Hey, thank you. Um, the next resolution, uh, revising and approving new service charges for ambulance services provided for, through the fire department. I was just informed before the meeting that uh, Chief Sims would like to remove this from the agenda for November and move it to December. Is that correct? Because you've got some additional work you need to do. Okay, so that's essentially it. So that's going to be removed. Um, did I skip the new uh, meeting schedule for 2023? Or is that not on here? It's in the no, discussion. It's there. It's oh, it's under discussion. discussion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, why don't we talk? Why don't we do that first? Because it's just gonna it's just gonna take a minute. Did anybody take a look at that schedule? I did to make sure that Wayne, you want to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say it. It follows the pattern we've done the last few years, where we've adjusted uh, to work session dates on Tuesdays for the two holidays in January and February, and then we've gone with uh, a little earlier in the month or instead of our standard third Monday, fourth Monday, we've gone. We've, we've accelerated that in November and December to, to keep us out of the week of, of uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, like we would have our city council meeting in December on Christmas Day. Right. If we, we don't want to do that. Pattern. I don't <laughs> want to be here. No. Okay. So. So anyway, that's it's pretty much the same as been the last several years. So, um, but if you have any issues with it, we can make changes. Otherwise, the proposal will be to, to bring this up in December for approval then. Okay. So 23 meeting schedule. It won't come back for this meeting. It'll come back in December, is what you're Right. Saying. We don't have a resolution for it at this point. Our plan was to have it in December. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No. All right. Well, we have one item left on the discussion items, and that's a update on the STR process uh, for January on the. I'm going to call it a steering committee. I don't know what the actual term of it is, but a committee to develop an ordinance and agreement between residents and short-term rental owners uh, who will be appointed to a committee. So, how are we doing? I think a steering committee is a, an excellent uh, description. Uh, the um, Peggy Lucas is um, um, kind of leading the. Um, the non-owner group, the citizen group. I think you've already got, uh, what, four people, is that correct, uh, Peggy? Correct. And, uh, and they've all agreed that they want to be on the committee? Uh, uh, Peggy, have they all agreed? Yeah, some of them we're still talking to, but it's uh, Terry McConnell, myself, Jeff Wood, and Jeff Tate. Okay. And if if any one of them drops out, you've got an alternate to, that wants to that would take their place. Yes. Okay. And, and I think the same thing on the uh, short-term rental group. I think they uh, number one thing that they have already done, and that's identified 
the um, the management company that is dealing or that is handling all of the properties that have been a problem issue. Apparently, there's one company or one person that has the, that manages those properties, like the one on um, on Brittany, um, and uh, apparently he has no intention of uh, um, resolving any issues. I know the short-term rental group has reached out to him, and he won't respond to them. I reached out to him, and I talked to him in the past um, early on, and uh, he won't respond to me. So. I don't know if that's an indication that he's got no interest in, in resolving whatever their issues might be, but um, hopefully we can get that corrected at some point. So, a uh, couple things. What are the names of the STR uh, representatives on the committee? Uh, the STR, I can't tell you that right at the moment, Doug. I know that uh, uh, Maria Pope and uh, Stacy Lamb and uh, uh, are two of them, and I'm not sure who the other two are at the moment. Um, I do have an individual that uh, will facilitate their meetings. Uh, he is a um, um, prior member of a um, um, city council in Texas as well as a member of a planning commission in Texas and has had prior experience with um, SDRs during that time period when were, he was planning commission as well as city council. He's going to facilitate the meeting, so remove me from that position, and uh, uh, I don't want to be in a position of exercising any influence over whatever their decisions or whatever their proposals might be. Um, let them come to their own agreement, and uh, then. So this is an impartial person. Yes. But it hadn't agreed to do anything yet. Uh, you just identified him, but he ain't agreed yeah, to do yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who is it? Ricky Head. Who? Ricky Head. Where does he live? Oh, uh, gee. Uh, he lives in, he lives in um, Lyman and John's uh, district. I can't tell you his, his exact address at the moment, but. What town does he live in? Oh, he lives in Bella Vista, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he lives in Bella Vista. And the other names that you, you read off, could you repeat those? I didn't the names that you had. Oh. Oh, yeah, so uh, it was myself, in Jeff your, Wood, Jack Pate, Jack and Pate. Terry McConnell. Jack Pate? Jack Pate. And Terry McConnell. And I'm confirming with them that they are residents of Bella Vista, because I think that should be your prerequisite. I hope, I hope we're all on the same page with that. I think Jack Pate is a resident because he ran he is a in, resident. Ward, in Ward 2. So well, all, all of the uh, people representing the residential side of it is, but Maria Pope is not. Maria Pope is not. And I believe Stacy Lamb is the person who is kind of heading up a, a, a process to maybe file an injunction against the city if, in fact, we do write some type of an ordinance. And I don't know that that's probably the proper person to be on the committee for the STR side. Except if they, if they, this group comes to some type of a, uh, an agreement that, um, that the city council can accept, then there won't be any necessary for any injunction. Did you get what you need? Uh, Jack Payton, Jerry McConnell are the only two that you have. Jerry, Jerry McConnell, McConnell, me, and Jeff Wood. I mean, I'm sorry, Jeff Lake. Uh, so the only thing I would add to the, to the issue about the threat lawsuit is that if that person is on this committee and they need, I, I can't provide any legal advice to this Stacy Lamb person because I do know they're represented by counsel as it regards to short-term rentals. Not that I would provide them legal advice anyway. They're sort of a... There's a citizen group that's going to make a recommendation to you all, and I make, and I advise you all. So I don't really necessarily think that would even come up because I think they're going to have their meetings and probably end up with some bullet point ideas, I would assume, uh, not not uh, text of an ordinance or legislation or something like that. But as I'll mention that to you. I, I don't feel comfortable. In fact, I, I do know they're represented by council and that whole group of however many there were, a dozen or so, um, that were on that threatened litigation, I'm not going to address publicly or, or in any other, privately or in any way about this issue because I do know they're represented by counsel. 
As you said, uh, the, the goal would be for them to, the, the two sides to establish some bullet points of, uh, of uh, uh, what the issues are and what, what they agree the issues might be, and then it would come to the council to look at. When's the first meeting going to be? Um, they wanted one before Thanksgiving, but uh, the, the Thank you. what was the question, Doug? When is the first meeting going to be? But the um, the person that is going to facilitate, he's got he has got commitments until after, until until Thanksgiving, so he's agreeable to a meeting after Thanksgiving. So, are there any representative any other representatives on the STR side? I don't know who they are at the moment, but are, are you suggesting maybe that they should be residents of Bella Vista? Well, that's people feel pretty strongly that way. If you're if, if you're not a, you're, I mean the people who live outside the city, they're not residents; they're investors. Right. Yeah. Um, it was simply them as a uh, as representing that particular group. Now then. Wendy yeah. Peterson might be a candidate for you because he owns a house and lives here as well. <coughs> so oh, he's also a candidate for city council. Right. This yeah. is going to be, you know, so that may or may decided not be December good. the 6th. I don't it think depends, so. It depends if that goes after the... I, 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 don't, I don't, personally, I don't know that that's a, that, that would be a, an issue to um, for the... Uh, the people on that side to be. Except after the election, if, if he were successful in becoming candidate, anything done after January 1st then would be as a councilman, not as a, not as a, uh... What's, what's the feeling? I mean, is that, I think they ought to be... Well, I thought this was supposed to be an independent... Independent group from committee. the council. They are supposed Except to be... Except from the council. They are supposed to be independent. Wouldn't be after January 1st if he, if, if, if he were successful. As successful. I, I, I don't know that he would be, even be interested as a, a member of the, uh, of the STR owners group. I don't, but I think there should be probably plenty of owners that live in Bella Vista that that um, that should not be a problem if that they be a member of the, uh, of the city, that they be a resident of the city as opposed to the outside. Um, well, we have lots of emails from owners of STR, so you certainly can look through that list. Of oh, yeah. Names. yeah. Well, um, I'm trying not to exercise any influence over their whatever their decisions are, or the people that they pick to work on this particular group. Uh, like in Peggy's situation, I, hey, you pick the people that you think will provide the um, uh, the dialogue that you will be of benefit to the city. Um, and the same thing on the other side. I'm trying not to exercise any influence over who uh, represents that group on that side. That uh, oh, they should be totally independent. Yeah, but Michelle Shiaco is a, is a owner renter. Right. Uh, SDR. Owner right. SDR. But on the same on the same token, you got to have somebody on the uh, on those sides that uh, that is uh, open to any meaningful discussion. They're not just uh, got a. Uh, they got a mindset that's going to not be uh, such that they can work with it. Well, you know, I just say you'll know, be selective on your STR side. I will say that I know that a couple of people have been mentioned, and maybe even a person sitting at this table made a contribution, campaign contributions to mayoral candidate candidate that is opposed to STR regulation at all. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you want a fair and independent review, then. I would suggest it be yes. somebody that hadn't made con campaign contributions right. to to that that candidate. Um, I, of course, I don't have any idea who you're talking about because I haven't looked. I haven't looked at who all has made campaign contributions to the. Well, I have. So have a lot of other people. So. And you made a campaign contribution yourself, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. So, does that mean what? That it's I, interesting. That I should be rep. Uh, that I should be. I'm just saying. What I should be you're more removed? or less taking a position. So, so what? You're more or less taking a position. I'm taking no a, regulation. No, no, I'm not hey, taking. Uh, if you're going to talk about me, I should be able to at least defend myself. No, you're because not. I'm not. You're a mayor. You're a mayor. Mayor world candidate. I, and, and I understand that, but but don't put Jason, words in what's my the, mouth. What's the rule? What's wrong? With it? There's no procedure to a work session. If you want to hear from somebody, perhaps you can. Okay, let's hear from you. 
Well, I mean, I, I just think it's interesting how you're laying out a platform that you're inventing of mine. And so you've never, you've never talked to me about STRs. You keep telling me all these different things that I think and don't think. Well, and well here's your it's opportunity. Very, very curious, Where do you stand? So. This is your opportunity right now. Where do you stand? Yeah. Do you support STR regulation? Right here was yeah, so I, I, I've been very upfront about certain regulations that I'm very happy to support. Are you? Uh, I'm, 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 in favor, I'm in favor of registration. I have been in favor of registration since the very beginning. I think we, as a city, have a right to know who and how to get a hold of certain people that don't live at, the, at, at a residence. I've, I've been very upfront about that. I'm but you're not to, in support of occupancy? Uh, no, so what I've uh, said about occupancy, or, uh, no, so, so don't, don't, don't tell me what I think. If you want to ask me a question, you can ask I'm me a question. But don't, you, yeah, so, I'm asking you right now. Yeah, well, well form, are, formulate are a question. So, of occupancy? Yeah, so what, I, what I've said from the beginning is that I'm happy, absolutely happy, to look at the reason that we're trying to regulate occupancy, which is the septic. And so we need to look at water usage uh, for, for free. We can ask hundreds of people. I mean, we have almost 500 of them, and we've requested absolutely zero information on water usage. We've never asked anybody for their water bills. People have volunteered them, and we have not taken that information. We can't say how much water they're using or what kind of threat it is to the septic system or how much of a load they put on their water until we look at actual data. We need to make a data based decision. We need to look at real data to, to come up with these numbers. We can't just say, hey, there's a lot of people in this house, therefore they use a lot of water. Because the reality is, is the numbers that I've seen, even if they're posting that, hey, it's a three bedroom septic and they're posting that they put 14 people in the house, you know, it's not full all the time. And the, the amount of water, every single one I've seen has come in between 30 and 35% of what their septic's rated for. And so I think we just need to look at real numbers. We need to okay, make data-based decisions. Okay, so we had decisions. Arkansas Department of Health come in and talk about it, right? I was here. I was here for all of that. He, so he, he, so he you're said, more of an expert he, than he is. No. What he said, okay. what he said, what he said was that it's, it's important to recognize that the usage in that home is different. Therefore, the water usage could be different. He doesn't know what it is either. And so he's saying that this could be different. So we need to evaluate it, we need to look at it, and we need to accept the fact that it can be different. And if it is different, then, then we need to look at it. He, he didn't know what those numbers were. How could he possibly know what those numbers are? Yeah, well, I know I was sat here in the same meeting and I asked him questions directly. And I, 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 know I, he was, I watched everything. I've already watched everything. He said a limit at two per bedroom. And he very reluctantly said, well, maybe. He, uh, I was here. Okay, yeah. so what about? Uh, inspections on the homes, so these de dated homes for uh, safety. Well, so 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 all I don't I don't want to answer every question right now. That's not what this meeting's about. Well, you're the but one that spoke up. You, you, you were the one that you were the one that spoke up because you said that I you 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 said that I was going to do absolutely nothing and was was in favor of absolutely zero altogether, and then start throwing Jerry under the bus, and so. That's not right, that's not fair, that's not honest, that is not my platform, that is not anything that I've ever said. So if you're going to put words in my mouth, you should at least be informed on what it is that I actually am but, saying. Look, I, I, look, it, so, so, so if you want to talk to me more about this later, I'm me. happy to talk to you about it. I know what your position it. is, and by the way, your campaign contributions, I've looked through the whole entire list, and I see several on, people on here that have spoke in front of city council that are STR owners, and their absolute position is they want no regulation, and some of them contri have contributed really nice sums of money. I'm just saying. So don't walk away from it. I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not. I'm not walking not away from anything. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not hiding anything. I'm not. I have nothing to hide. I've been very upfront about my platform since the beginning. But you're just ill-informed on what I'm it is that I believe. You absolutely me. are. You 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 accused me on video of things that I have never said or done. So do you get, get educated SDR on the subject and we can talk about it more. And there is a broader conversation here, but the, we'll just focus yeah. on that one tonight, okay? That's, that's perfect. All right. You're the one that wanted to speak. You know? you, you yeah, I, I, you're, I, saying, I, you're trying to play it down the middle. I'm not trying I mean, to play it down the middle. I'm not trying to play it down the middle, not one bit. I've been very upfront about what my beliefs are on STRs and property All right. rights. All right, that's not. And you also pointed out that, um, uh, that I should have some position or that I should be uh, not have a position based on my contributions to a mayor candidate? I'm just saying, you know. So what's that got to do with it? That's the situation anyway. 
What, what is that? Got can you be impartial? Being impartial. Can you be impartial on an STR res, on, on an STR? Well, you uh, just got through saying ordinance. That, you just got through saying that I was opposed to any regulation. That's not true. I've never said I was opposed to any regulation. I've said I'm for regulations. I think the STRs need to be regulated. I have said that, but I, but I have objected to the septic systems being included in that particular ordinance. And Daniel Ellis just stood right here like tonight and told Peggy and myself that, uh, that, uh, that, um, uh, ah, dang it, that thing turned off anyway. Anyway, he just sat right here tonight and told Peggy that, of course, that the septic systems was a, a matter of great concern to him and that he agreed that it did not need to be included in this ordinance. It was a broader situation that needed to be dealt with on a citywide basis. I'd like to have Daniel Oz speak for himself. He's not here. Well, if I call him Peggy, do you want to verify that? Is that what he said? He said we should take so you, know, you want to accuse, well, me. He, he said, accuse me and not tell he, the truth? He, he, does, he doesn't have a problem with writing, I don't think, verbiage into an STR ordinance about septic systems, but he does want to see something more broad put in place that Correct. would that's what that, he that, said, that would speak yeah. to the entire community. That's, right. that's what he said. So, now so you there you go. Now, now you want to talk said. about so there about, you go. Now you want to talk about um, a having a bias. How about your bias? I don't have a bias. Oh, no kidding. Oh, by golly. Let's, let's all think about that. Hey, for oh, so, so, Jerry, here you go. Here you go. Let's do talk about it, okay? Okay. I'm the chairperson for the Advertising Promotion Commission for Bella Vista, right? Yeah. We promote, uh, we brand, we market, and we promote Bella Vista yep. broadly. Yep. That means uh, the environment, our amenities, uh, our restaurants, our grocery stores, uh, and short term rentals. We do. We promote all of it. Where the conversation started with me, which I've stated over and over again, is when I started receiving phone calls and emails from residents of Bella Vista with having issues with short-term rentals, either next door in proximity to their properties. Whenever that conversation started, I came over and I spoke with Doug Tapp. I spoke, I just brought it up and said, man, I'm starting to get these calls and these emails about short-term rentals. He said, yeah. And he goes, we're getting them all the time. I said, you are? He said, yeah. I mean, they're, we're starting to get them consistently. And he said, not only that, but we've got people advertising for 10, 12, 14, 16 people in these short-term rentals, these residential homes that are built out for two, maybe three bedroom septic systems. I said, you got to be kidding me. You, 14, 16? He said, yes. Next time I saw Peter Christie, I had a conversation. I said, Peter, I think we have an issue here, and it's growing, and if we don't address it, it's going to put our short-term rental business in jeopardy because the residents are going to finally have get to a point where they're going to have enough, and they're going to show up, and they're going to demand we do something about it. So all I, tr all I did was started to move forward and research the problem, research ordinance across, ordinances across the country, we organized a community meeting right here in the Bella Vista City Court. We had 104 people show up. 91 of those 104 said we needed some type of short-term ordinance regulation. Okay? So you talk about a bias. I've gone through all these steps. I've listened to tons of people, public comment at City Council from both sides of the conversation, emails from both sides of the conversation. I mean, I have gone ad nauseum at length. I have read ordinances from all across the country, and it isn't just the ordinances, but very well informed about cities that kept their hand in the head in the sand and never did anything to address the situation until the cities were overwhelmed with short-term rentals, and now they're trying to figure out ways to walk them back. And we've got some of them right here in proximity to us. Eureka, Ar Eureka Springs, Arkansas actually codified the, the residences were now short-term rentals. If that house ever sells, it cannot be a short-term rental again. It has to go back to a regular residential residence. Doug was just at a meeting, I don't know where it was, talking to Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is a great model for, for a short-term ordinance. They put a cap originally, Doug, of 600. They just walked it back, they walked it back to 500, and now they just recently walked it back to 400 because they're having diff so much difficulty with them. Is it, and I'm not overstating that, right? That is absolutely true, okay? So it, it, we have a large amount of information 
that says we have potentially several different problems and issues facing us. And we better address them, and we better address them now. I have nothing against short-term rentals, poorly. I mean, we stay in short-term rentals when we travel frequently, okay? But we have sept potentially have septic issues from overloading homes. Uh, we have a uh, number, like a, a cap issue here, that our city could become overwhelmed with them as we continue to move forward and develop. And that's going to happen because several large tracts of land have been, have been bought. We know that there's plans for that land. But I'm just saying, we better address it, and we better address it now before it's too late. But my bias didn't start anywhere other than feedback from residents of the city of whom voted for me to hear them, listen to them, represent them. And that is a position I came at this from, okay? That's it. Okay. All right. So, your committee. It doesn't feel like it's got off to a real fast start. I'm going to just wait and let it unfold and see what happens. Well, good. So I, I think we have some questions. I think, that's a good, I think that's an excellent approach to take because it will it will unfold. Um, it it will unfold and it will take place, and that they will come back with some guidelines or some regular uh, some uh, uh, bullet points. Now, whether they will be adopted by the council or not, I don't have any idea. But um, but you talk about my bias. I think I've told Peggy. Um, that, hey, I want to be separated from their decision-making process. Uh, if I'm going to be, all I want to be there for is just to answer questions for them. I don't want to be there in a, any type of a position to give any kind of influence over the over this group. I want them to come to their own conclusions. So if that's bias, then I don't know what other. What a, how else I could remove myself from that bias other than just not show up, don't be there, period. But, uh, but. Yes, sir. Okay, that's enough. So we'll wrap wrap it up, okay? But do you have something, Larry? I guess a couple of thoughts that I have is that I think the all, all of the members of the committee, whether it's for the STRs or whether they're the citizen representatives, I think they should be residents of the city of Bella okay. Vista. I right. think they're, if the foundation is then with the city, not outside the city, as a business proposition. So I, that would be one thought. The, the I, second, don't have, I, I don't have any problem with that. Second thought would be is uh, we're going to call them a steering committee, if you will, um, but will those meetings be open to the public or will they not be open to the public? Will they be noticed by anyone? For us, uh, if there's going to be more than one council member there, obviously they'll have to be noticed. So I guess that's going to be up to the you know, council members if they want to be there or don't want to be there. Um, the only uh, the only request that I would have any council members there is again that you take the same stand that I do. Let them do the make their own decisions. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, not not be it's, there. It's a, that steering committee. We're not there to steer. Right. We're there to listen. So, but so, aside from the councilman thing. It, it wouldn't necessarily be open, would it, Chase? No, this is just a group of citizens who, who want to get together and make some recommendations to the government. So it's not an official city committee. Okay. Okay. It would not, uh, it's not a governing body in any way, so it would not fall into the FOI public meeting requirement. So it's not an but as was stated, if multiple members of the council are there and participating in the discussion, then it could, it would become a, an FOIable public meeting situation. So we, so we don't consider it as an ad hoc committee? You, you have an appointed, you you can make this as formal as you want. If you want to create a committee and appoint members to it as a council through resolution and give them a deadline and all that, you, you can. You have not done that thus far. My understanding at this point is it's just a group of citizens who are very much interested on either side of the issue who want to be able to make some recommendations. That's um, And they were wanting to do that before January when these matters come back before you on the active agenda. So, so is, the, is the plan to get the committee going before and have something presented at the January Council meeting? I would like to. Is that what the I, timeline I can't is? see any reason we why. We should have some, some sense of timeline for yeah. so uh, we know where we are in yeah, terms of this I, overall process. I can't process. see any reason why that would not, um, could not happen. Do you, Peggy? Well, that's what I told Jerry, that I, I think that I would rather do it sooner than later. Right. And have something to present to you guys. We've been we've been wrestling with this since June of this yeah. year, and, and 
so we kicked the can down the road by tabling it and doing other things. I don't think I don't think that's it. I don't think December would actually be a would be a, a good. Uh, I, I think that might be premature, yep. uh, considering we've got some holidays in November. We got holidays in December. Uh, well, it's, I'm thinking that it, the uh, ordinances and questions are all tabled until January. They come back. They on are on the January agenda. January, 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 so. be first reading. Still. So that's huh. when they will be coming back. So yep. whether yep. you're ready or not, they'll be there. So. so it would be appropriate, I think, to to so that we don't have to table them again. Right. Is that we can table them because we have an alternative to consider. So I think January should be the target to have a. a a plan presented. I, I don't see that they have that many uh, issues. I mean, that, that many <coughs> things that are of an issue. So, I, does that make that make any? I, I I told Jerry that we'll know the first meeting or two when we go the, down the list and we've got eight people in the room and we say permits, how close or how far apart we are, yeah. and we go down occupancy, you know, capping on the list is five five things, yeah. so we'll know quickly whether we're this close or that far apart, whether we have the right people in the room or we don't have the right people in the room. Because this, this group is going to be a reflection of pretty much, you know, the and eight months that you guys have gone through. The residents both before the, you know, the pros and the cons of it yeah. is what I'm yeah. thinking is what would be the best for us in the long view. Certainly wish we didn't have to be here, that it had been settled on 1024, but with with what we know today, but uh, would rather keep driving the puck forward if that's if that's the only option on the table. In the can down the road is not a good plan because it is a it is a con Aggressive. continuing <laughs> continuing issue for the residents here without any regulation in place. I'm sorry. Continuing without any regulation in place is not satisfying to those no. residents who have issues or complaints. No. So, so. No. So. And it doesn't. And it doesn't add any, any muscle to our enforcement either. So. Well, yeah, and to, uh, you know, I reached out to Taylor today, and I got the information from the March, February effort they did on the survey. Yeah. Yeah. 106 people came to that survey. 90, 90, uh, one. Residents said, please do something about this. And we're now in October, and we've identified the things. I think it's just a matter of now we have to come forward and put it into ordinance. So <laughs> it has. One thing I'd like to just say for the benefit of the council, I know that members of this committee are probably going to hear this, but one of, the, one of the concepts that came up, which I think would pose tremendous legal issues for the city, is allowing a neighbor or adjoining property veto over someone being able to have a short-term rental. That is not a road we can go down yep. as a city. And so I don't know what, what this committee will come back with. We run the risk they'll come back with some recommendations that are well thought out and entirely unconstitutional. <laughs> and so I, I just I don't want that to happen, and they're not going to intend to do that. But, uh, but I just want to, that's the one thing that I've heard in the discussion that would cause me to, to think that. And so I would just express that that really anything you do that along these lines could not really include anything like that. So, uh, Larry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, one, hopefully, one last question. Uh, we have a list of 567 confirmed sites. Uh, SCRs. Yeah. Uh, the count is now four, uh, 488. The shrunk. No. No, no it keeps rolling around like there, yeah. every time we do a count. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, that, those, I'm, I'm those, 100 off. It's 488 yeah. 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 that 400. are currently advertised, yeah. okay. actively advertised. So there are actually additional STRs that, and, and this is just a shot in time, whenever Granicus does its work, if they're not advertised, then they're not listed in the 488. There are like another 51 that for whatever reason are not advertised at this particular moment. That could be because they're just not interested in running the business in the wintertime. Maybe it's not profitable. Maybe they decided to get out of the business. They sold the house. Maybe they decided to do something different with it. So we have 4,888 currently active. So relative to that, so that when we get a call to either code enforcement or to, or, or to the police department after hours, 
so that they know that this is not a residence that a resident situation that they're being called out to is it appropriate for us to make that 488 list available that the police department can add it into their uh, data system for dispatching and officers to know or be aware of I don't know. I, I, I mean, I know, I know you can do it because we've had that conversation. James said, I mean, I'm sorry, Chief Graves, he said that it's, it's pop, they can put it in, what's your system called? CAD. CAD. They can put that list with addresses in there. I don't know if we want to move forward with that at this particular point or not, but we could do it. Now, so the, the, the data, right? Of the 488 that are identified as advertised right now, we don't have specific addresses for, I think it's 71 of them. They're still being located because they have to go through this research, okay? The, the data is updated um, quarterly. So at the end of December, we will have additional specific addresses for the 71 that are missing right now. I don't know if we'll have the full 71 identified specifically, but we'll be much closer to having all 488 specifically identified. How, what that gap is going to be, I don't know. For how many are owner occupied? Of the 488? Uh, you know what, I could get a pretty good feel. I, off the top yeah. of my head, I don't know, because they are bucketed, you know, into the type of yeah. uh, Residents, whether it's a home or whether it's a town home or okay. whether it's whatever, but I could. It's not. It isn't very many. It's it's a small number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I would like to see that in uh, the confirmed ones, not the 488, but the confirmed ones out of that list, uh, transmitted to the police department, have it added into the dispatch mapping system. I mean, I I don't have a problem. I can give that list to James. I if I don't. I, comment, I, I think you know when we're talking about looking for objective data to help you folks make a decision. In the future, you know, if we did have it in our CAD system, then when you ask me, because I've been asked before, hey, how many times you respond to this for that? And, and, and it's very difficult. We can't pull out this, the, the short term rentals. We can just pull big numbers from the entire city for like disturbances or loud parties. And then we can just, we can just extrapolate based on how many short term rentals. And so, so if we did have a list, then we can at least respond like we do to normal. You know, we wouldn't. Treat them different because we can't. We respond like we normally respond to any citizen complaint, but then at least we would have in our system we could pull, we can enter data, we can we can enter a search category and pull out all the data for short-term rentals, disturbances, and give you guys some some good data moving forward. At least start collecting data to, to see if we really do have a problem or if it's just maybe one or two isolated short-term rentals that are the problem. So give you better data. Give you a lot better data, and, and give you uh, give you some factual results. It would also alert the uh, the officer responding to the fact that this is a rental property. That's not a uh, not a property owner having a big party, a celebration of their own. And I think, from a practical standpoint, I would expect that we would treat the owner-occupied situation a slightly warmer and more friendly than we would a business property. I, I would have to disagree. We're going to treat everybody the same. Okay. I mean, that's just, we, we can't, we're not going to treat one party as friendlier than the other party. I mean, my officers are going to respond, they're going to be polite and courteous, and they're going to enforce the law evenly amongst all residents. That's just the way we have to do it. Okay. Um, we, we can't do it differently. And I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, there are some different things we can do. If we know it's a short-term rental, maybe we'll have some, some information in the system of a property owner that wants to be contacted, that wants to be involved if their property is a nuisance. And we can make those, those calls to that property owner. But going out and, and enforcing the law differently just because it's a short-term rental is not something we're going to do. Okay. Quick, quick, quick question. You, you brought up yeah. the A&T Commission a moment ago. Um, the advertise, or, uh, Discover Bella Vista is a, a outstanding website. I don't know who designed that, but it's good. And um, so I think the um, the um, the promotion of or Discover Bella Vista has been obviously been a success because we've obviously been discovered. But is it possible for the AP Commission to um, direct any advertising toward business or commercial development like hey, we? 
we need uh, we need commercial development in Bella Vista. Is that is that a possibility? Any of those things? I don't. I don't know. I said we we market, we brand, we promote, but I don't even know how we would like. That's not what. That's not like our lane is to solicit businesses like to Bella Vista. You know, I mean, hopefully, what through encouraging or making people aware of Bella Vista, we have businesses recognizing that and know that this is a viable place to open up a new business, right? But, yeah, I don't know, I haven't even I haven't thought about that. I haven't gone down that road. I, I think for all the candidates running for office, whether it's in the mayoral or the alder, uh, councilman position, all of them have as a part of their platform a, a desire to promote businesses and commercial growth. And, Bella Vista, yeah, which we do, I mean, pretty much uniform. But the, the the other side of that is is that it's much easier said than it is done. Yeah, uh, you because, know, what? because of the land ownership that we yeah, have. Yeah, just because I don't get a chance to talk about it very often. I'll tell you what, I I have, have a lot of pride with what we have done with that commission, and from where we started and where we are today, it took a lot of time, a lot yeah. of work, and a yeah. lot of effort, and it is, we are in a great spot right now. We. I, the the uh, company that we have working with us and representing us, it's amazing what they provide us with. We are so efficient with our money, it's 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 ridiculous, really, with what in what we accomplish. So anyway, we have a meeting Thursday, just for what it's worth. Is that it? Anybody else? No. All right. We'll wrap it up for tonight, and we'll see everybody next Monday. Thank you, Doug. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Does he still need to talk to you? Yeah.